I trust you are well today. If you're not, Jesus is the answer. If you are, Jesus is still the answer. So give him praise and honor and glory. I would like to read to you from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 11. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Again, Jesus is the answer. Miss Faye, pray for us, please. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name, and we thank you. We praise you for the answer. We praise you for your word. We praise you for Jesus coming, living here, dying, and rising again. Yes. And we thank you for the salvation. And we thank you that he is coming again. And we ask that we would all be ready. Help us to listen to the word and just receive it into ourselves and live the word. And we just give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, I want you to study right along with us as you read and as Miss Faye reads, that word will penetrate very deep into your spirit and will become a part of, of yes. you. And that way you will be able to have that word living in you and what is in your heart can and should come out of your mouth. So that means you will not only be prepared for your eternal life, but you can help other people get prepared as well by testifying as to what Jesus has done for you. Let them know that he is the answer that they need and that by believing on him, they can be assured of life yes. and it more abundantly here and now and in the time to come. Eternal life belongs to us. Let me give you a quick review of what we've talked about last week. We were talking about the fact that the new Jerusalem is here on earth. It's going to be a grand and gl glorious place for us to be in. But the greatest thing is that we're actually going to get to see God and the Lord Jesus Christ face to face. That's the most important thing about heaven, whether we're talking about where heaven is right now or once the new Jerusalem is here on earth. We know that John had been caught up in the spirit and had been uh, guided through heaven and, and the events that were going to occur by an angel. This angel had accompanied him, just constantly showing him and telling him what to expect and what to write down. And John did exactly that. But near the end of last week's program, we got to the place where John was no longer in the spirit but instead he was strictly in physical form and he realized he was back on the Isle of Patmos. And we find that he did not actually see a lot of things that were going on anymore as he had in the spirit, but he was at least able to hear voices and probably the angel that had guided him through the events that he was to write about uh, was probably there with him on the Isle of Patmos. When we left off last week, though, we were at verse 7 of Revelation chapter 22. And so for us to just tie everything together, Miss Faye, if you'll read that verse again, please. That's Revelation 22, verse 7. Revelation 22, 7 says, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. So up to this point, the angel had been talking with John. But without any special announcement or anything, Jesus spoke up and he said, I come quickly. And blessed is everybody who keeps the saying of this prophecy. Now then, John was able to hear the voice of Jesus, but I don't think he saw Jesus. This is the first of three different times in Revelation chapter 22 that Jesus is going to speak up and say, I'm coming soon. I'm coming quickly. And we find that there had been other indications in the book of Revelation that Jesus was going to come soon. 
but not in the same way that he spoke it here. For instance, back whenever the uh, letters were being written to the different churches, there was an indication to the church at Philadelphia that Jesus was going to return and catch away the believers. But we know that, that we should be looking for Jesus every single day because he is going to come quickly. In Revelation chapter 1, it talks about the fact that he's coming with the clouds and that the eyes will be able to behold him. Now, let me quickly explain that because that's when he is actually going to come all the way to the earth, that all of the eyes will behold him. And how that's going to take place? Probably by satellite, television, that sort of thing. But anyway, Jesus is going to come soon. He's going to catch away the dead in Christ first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up with him. And we will spend seven years in heaven while the tribulation period is going on here on earth. And then at the end of the seven years, this is when Jesus will return all the way to the earth and we along with him and every eye will behold him. And I'm not going to repeat everything that I've shared with you over the past many, many weeks. But I want you to understand Jesus spoke up and said that he was coming quickly and that people who keep the words of this prophecy, the people who believe what is written in the book of Revelation will be blessed. They will be blessed with eternal life. Hallelujah. Now then, again, just as it had stated in the beginning of the book of Revelation that people who read it would be blessed, we're going to find a similar portion of Scripture right now. Miss Faye, Revelation 22, verses 8 and 9, please. Revelation 22, beginning verse 8. And I saw, I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. Hallelujah. We worship God when we understand what's going to take place. And if we don't worship God as we hear and learn about these future events, we're missing the mark, and that's not good. So it's imperative that we worship God through the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, the total plan of salvation, which is getting to go to heaven when we leave this world, but it's also getting to experience a taste of eternal life even here and now. But what I want you to understand is in verse 7, Jesus had spoken up and said that he was coming quickly. Now it goes back to the angel that is there with John. And John heard these words regarding the book of Revelation. It says that the people who hear them and understand that John had seen these things taking place and he understands that the angel had been the one who had shared the information with him other than when Jesus spoke directly. And so John sensed the power and the presence of God right there on the Isle of Patmos with him. He sensed that anointing and he knew that the angel was there, and so he fell down before the angel to worship the angel. But folks, we're not supposed to worship angels. We are to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. We're to worship Almighty God. We're to worship the Holy Spirit. And so the angel corrected John for doing this. John, you are not to do this because I am a fellow minister of Almighty God in the same sense that you are a minister of the Word of God. So John was corrected. But at the same time, whenever the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we can't help but get excited about it. And we talk about how faith is not feeling, and it's not, but 
when we are experiencing through faith the power and presence of God, folks, there's some feeling that comes along with it. We don't base our trust and our faith in the feeling, but feelings accompany the anointing of God. So the angel said, John, I understand what you're talking about, but don't worship me. Just don't do it. So here the angel was helping John understand there is a difference between the creator and the created. You see, angels were created, but God Almighty is the creator of all things, and the Lord Jesus Christ was definitely present as all of creation was taking place. So it's imperative that we worship the creator. We worship God, not anything that has been created. Got that? Mark it down. Amen. All right. We must never forget that there is a gulf between God and mankind. Now, Jesus is the mediator. He's the bridge that takes us into the presence of God. But without Jesus Christ, there would be no way for any of us to ever enter into the presence of God. So we must understand that human beings nor material things cannot enter into the presence of God without the help of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now then, it says servants as well. And we like to think of ourselves as children of God, and we are. No question about that. But we have talked in previous programs about the fact that once we're in the New Jerusalem and the earth has been refined by the fire of God, that we will be able to serve God as a blessing, not as a chore. And we must understand that even though we are called servants from time to time in the Scripture, we are children of God. And another word that is used to describe who we are is saints. If we are genuine believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, even here and now, we all are saints. We are priests and we are kings, all because of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But here, servant, the word servant denotes the deeds that we are to do in order to glorify Almighty God. And the word saints characterizes us as children of Almighty God. Hallelujah. So this angel even acknowledged the fact that he was a servant of God. Hallelujah. And that all created things are to worship the Creator. Hallelujah. Now he says that this is God's word that has been revealed to John. And he says that this message is imperative for all of us to understand. And that as we understand it, we will be drawn into the word. The word will become a part of us. Jesus will become even a, a greater part of us because we will exercise more faith and more trust in him. And we together will become closer as brothers and sisters in the Lord. So this is a great opportunity for us as the church to draw closer together as we study the book of Revelation. And if you've noticed lately, most ministers on TV are talking about the fact that Jesus is coming soon and that the book of Re Revelation is a reality and that we all need to be well aware of these future events so that we will be able to participate in them and receive the blessings that God wants us to have. So in a sense, we are to be brother prophets. We are to spread the word. We are to share the message that's recorded in the book of Revelation to help our fellow man understand how he or she needs to make certain everything is A-OK -okay between them and their creator. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the angel is emphasizing to John the importance of John keeping the book and explaining it or writing it down in such a way that we as ordinary human beings who believe in Jesus can understand and receive the message of the book of Revelation. Hallelujah. So 
in that respect, we are to be fellow servants as well as brother prophets or prophet brothers. So the book of Revelation, well, I started to say is probably the most important book in the Bible. But I don't know about that. All of the books of the Bible are very, very important. But just simply because the events recorded in the book of Revelation have not actually taken place as of yet, we sort of get a little bit leery of it. We get scared of it. We're afraid we can't understand it. But folks, the book of Revelation was inspired by God. And he breathed upon it in such a way that if we will allow the anointing of the Holy Spirit to come upon us, we can understand the book of Revelation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Although Christians down through the ages have worshipped false gods and allowed the dragon to sort of mislead us from time to time, we must understand that greater is he that is within us than he that's within the world. So even though we may have had some trouble understanding some of the word of God, especially the book of Revelation, we can know that we don't have to be deceived by any of the tactics of the devil regarding the book of Revelation. And yet it's happening all around us. People are taking uh, the information about what's going to take place during the tribulation period, and they're trying to make it happen here and now. For instance, the mark of the beast is not to really occur until the second half of the tribulation period, which is the great tribulation time. And that has not come about as of yet because the first three and a half years of tribulation have not come about as of yet. So that's how people are misunderstanding the book of Revelation. So it's imperative that you and I make sure that we are in tune with the Holy Spirit as we read the book of Revelation. The Holy Spirit, the breath of God, the power of God will come upon us and will give us the correct interpretation of the book of Revelation. Amen, amen, and amen. And only God is worthy of praise and honor. And the book of Revelation will help us realize that even more. Miss Faye, let's go ahead with Revelation chapter 22, verses 10 and 11, please. Revelation 22, beginning verse 10. And he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. So here we have scripture that says that God understands that there has been some confusion regarding the book of Revelation. But he says those who are holy are to remain holy and righteous. And those who are not saved, most of them are going to remain unsaved. And that will be the case whenever the rapture takes place because you see the rapture is going to be unannounced and people will be caught off guard. And there won't be time for repenting whenever the rapture takes place. But if we have studied the word of God as we should, we can be sealed into the promises of God that are recorded into this book. As long as we are faithful and genuine believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, then we are going to be blessed beyond measure as these different events occur. There was a time that this information was not disclosed to the people in general. But God has a specific timing for everything. And folks, this is the time that we take the book of Revelation and we study it in detail because it's about to be fulfilled completely. 
and we need to understand it. So, yes, the book is being opened up now to where we can have an understanding that people even just a few years ago did not have the opportunity to get the information about the book of Revelation that we have today. So study the book of Revelation. But again, rely on the Holy Spirit to make certain that you're interpreting what you're reading correctly. Hallelujah. 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 This book has been recorded as a part of our Bible ever since we've had a Bible as such, the 66 books of the Bible put together, forming the canon of the Bible. It's been a part of the Bible, but again, people have not understood it. But now is the time for the disclosure to take place to where we can understand the book of Revelation. And the Holy Spirit is here to help us understand that. But what I want you to understand as, as with great emphasis upon it is that the time of these events is near. Jesus in verse 7 says, I come quickly. Here we read that the time is at hand. The time is near. God's plan was actually settled before creation. God, being God, is able to see from eternity past all the way to eternity future, and he sees it as one eternal present, and therefore nothing catches him off guard. He has always known exactly what was going to be taking place at any given point in the history of mankind because it was in his vision, God's vision, that he was able to see everything that mankind would ever experience from Adam and Eve to the very last human being who is here on earth and leaves this world by way of death and goes into eternity future, be it heaven or hell. God understands he planned it all, he foreordained it all, and it's happening just as he knew it would happen. We find in, that in verse 11, that one's character is revealed through the deeds which he has done based on what he considers to be divine judgment. In other words, we must make sure that we line up with the word of God the whole Word of God, but if we line up with the book of Revelation, then that will mean that we have already lined up with all the rest of the Bible. So the question is, are you ready to meet Jesus? If Jesus should step out on the clouds of glory right now and call for all of the saints to come up, would you go? Do you genuinely believe that you have been born again and that all your sin has been forgiven by Jesus Christ? That all your sin has been washed away by the blood of the Lamb? Do you genuinely believe that? Folks, if there's the least bit of a question in your mind as to whether you've been born again, this is the time to call upon the name of Jesus. We can't wait until tomorrow because we don't know that any of us will ever see tomorrow. We have no assurance of it. So right now, this is the day of salvation. And I can be even more specific. Really and truly, this is the hour. This is the moment of salvation. Don't postpone it. You just might be waiting too late if you do. The book of Revelation is a guide for us. Help us to know what's ahead. Let's make sure we understand it and that we are prepared to experience the blessings of God through it. Amen. Do you have prayer requests? Please call or write to us.
You can support Revelation of the Word by first praying for God's anointing to be on this ministry. If you feel led to send a financial offering, you can send your gift to Revelation of the Word Ministries, 205 Liberty Lane, Madison, Tennessee, 37115. Everyone is invited to visit Revelation of the Word Church. Call, email, or write the Neals for more information. Now, back to Revelation of the Word. The Holy Spirit has just put within my spirit that by accident on the part of an individual to have watched this program, at least that individual thinks it was an accident, but God ordained it. The individual that God has revealed to me is a person that has been caught up in witchcraft. You have actually even claimed that a lot of the things that you say and do have come to you from God. But down deep inside, you know that that's not the case. And that there is nothing in the Word of God that will validate the things that you have said. You know enough about the Bible to know that. But you have allowed the enemy to take control of your life. Folks, if you're that individual, this is the time for you, the individual who has practiced witchcraft, to get on your knees and call upon the name of Jesus. And no matter what the sins are that you have committed in the past, the blood of Jesus is the only means by which those sins can be forgiven. But Jesus is ready, willing, and able to forgive you right now yes. of those sins. And not only to save your soul, but to fill you with the power of God so that you can speak the words of God and undo, in many cases, the harm that you've done in the past. Because you can go to those same people and you can tell them that you made a mistake. You need to ask their forgiveness and that they turn to God. And remember, folks, God loves you and we do too. 